How's it going, guys? It's Jacob here, and this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're brand new, welcome. In this channel, I try to take helicopter topics and break them down one by one in a manner that's simple and easy to grasp just using a pen and paper. Now, in this video, I'll be covering the types of drag, so let's get to it. Now, we all know from basic aerodynamics classes that thrust and drag are opposing forces, but what exactly is drag? Well, drag is the force that opposes or resists the motion of a helicopter as it travels through the air. One easy way to show this visually is to compare drag in relation to airspeed. So let's take a look at that. So we'll start out with a simple chart here. I have drag on the left, and we'll have airspeed down here, zero being in the corner. So airspeed increasing as you go to the right, drag increasing as you go up. And just as a reference, we'll say put 100 knots here, just so we can reference it for later. But drag can be broken down into a few different types, the first being parasitic drag. Now this is probably the most obvious to understand because it applies to everything moving through the air, whether that be a helicopter, a plane, or even just a car driving. And it's going to look something like this. It's going to start, start low as you're at a lower airspeed and increase quite uh, dramatically as you increase airspeed. And like I said, this first one is called parasite drag. All right, now parasite drag, it's the air resistance on the object as it moves. It uh, increases with the surface area and the speed, and uh, it's the basis for why you want to streamline objects. Now, this can be seen in helicopters from differences in drag charts based on, you know, uh, aircraft design, you're gonna see, you know, say leaner, narrower helicopters being more streamlined, more efficient through the air. Whereas when you have a helicopter that's a little bit fatter body style, and then maybe start mounting some more stuff on it, you know, weapon pods, uh, winches, big fat landing gear, all this stuff that increases the surface area, it's going to increase that parasite drag even more so uh, than a, a streamlined object. Um, but parasite drag increases rapidly with airspeed because it's a product of velocity squared in the drag equation. So that means that if speed is doubled, drag is actually going to quadruple. So that's why you're going to see such an increase in that parasite drag as airspeed increases. Alright, the next type of drag is going to be profile drag. Alright. Now profile drag, this specifically deals with the drag caused by the frictional resistance of the blades as they travel through the air. And this is going to look something like this. It's going to start out low and have a moderate increase as you accelerate faster. Alright, now imagine the difference between an airfoil shaped like a block versus a streamlined airfoil. This is kind of the easiest way to picture this. So here we have a block and here we have the tapered airfoil that we typically imagine. If the airflow is coming towards this object right here, and keep in mind this is in reference to an airfoil. If it is non-streamlined and it's very bulky and flat like this, you're going to have a huge difference in uh, the airflow around it. So it's going to impact it and kind of get diverted off in all kinds of different directions as it tries to travel around this object and overall be very, very inefficient as it travels around this object, causing a lot of turbulence, a lot of disturbance in the air. And that's uh, that's causing this increase in profile drag. Vice versa, or vice versa, if you have a streamlined airfoil, as the air approaches it, it's going to impact it and kind of transition around it in a less violent, less disturbed manner, uh, transitioning around that airfoil. Um, so keep in mind, profile drag is dealing with the lifting parts of the helicopter. Profile drag, or parasite drag, dealing with the non-lifting parts of the helicopter. So parasite drag dealing with the uh, the airframe, the helicopter itself, whereas this is dealing with the, uh, the airfoil shape, skin friction, stuff like that. So while the helicopter may be traveling at 100 knots, you know, and it's affected by all this profile drag, your airflow uh, around, the profile, or around the airfoil, you know, potentially getting up to 400 knots, four times as much um, of a velocity in the blades as they travel around, uh, that's going to translate into, say, a 16 times uh, difference in the amount of drag just because it is a uh, uh, it's growing at a uh, exponential rate compared to parasite drag all right so lastly uh, we'll talk about is induced drag 
Now, easy way to explain this one is just that induced drag is the result of producing lift. Uh, you can get into the weeds as far as the physics behind all of this, but uh, that goes into a long tangent of formulas and whatnot. But just keep in mind, a simple way to put it is induced drag um, is resulting from higher angles of attack where you're producing more lift and generating more downward velocities and vortices, which increases uh, your induced drag. Now, what that's going to look like is you're going to start high from your... Uh, uh, your lower air speeds and it's going to reduce over time looking something like this with a, a, uh, a drastic decrease in drag as you start to increase forward. Now why is that? Well think back to my uh, videos airflow with a hover and aerodynamics and a takeoff. I'll put those links in the comments if you haven't seen them. Um, but basically it takes a higher angle of attack and more uh, power required to operate when the helicopter is less than its effective translational lift airspeed and especially at stationary OGE hovers, you know, out of ground effect, high angles of attack, uh, you're going to have airflow that's very, very turbulent, and it's sitting here swirling around the, the rotor disc, operating its own wingtip vortices. A lot of power applied, a lot of downwards flow of air, very, very turbulent environment. Uh, but these high angles atta of attack and these flight profiles are creating the stronger vortices, um, and the induced drag is increasing dramatically when you're at these air, when you're at these uh, these flight profiles. As you start to increase faster, you get through effective translational lift. You start to outrun these vortices, and as you accelerate faster and faster in forward flight, your angle of attack is actually reducing a little bit more and more and more and more. So that's reducing that induced drag as you uh, continue to fly faster and faster. Now, if you were to combine all three of these types of drag. Um, you know, it'd be plotted somewhere about here if you were to add it all up, but for sake of simplicity, we'll keep it right here with the chart. But if you were to add them all up, you're going to see a line that resembles something like this. Uh, and this is going to be your total drag line. Now, this is a product of your parasite drag plus your profile drag plus your induced drag is going to equal your total drag. Now, this is your, your total drag line. Uh, so why is that important? Well, all of these charts um, are used to calculate exact numbers for performance planning. So in your helicopter operator's manuals, uh, there should be cruise charts and all this kind of stuff broken down. But all of that stuff is based on your total drag. But from a total drag chart, you can get a lot of information from it when you go out to plan uh, whatever flight you're doing. So looking at the total drag chart, we can look at things um, like where is drag the least. And that's going to be... You know, right around here, the bottom of the bucket, we're going to have max endurance slash, you know, our max lift to drag airspeed. This is going to give us, you know, our max time in the air uh, because of the least amount of fuel, fuel burn. It's also going to give us our most efficient uh, power setting when we're flying because it's, uh, you know, it's an area in the, the bottom of the bucket as far as uh, drag on the airframe. So it's easier on the engines to keep the, the rotor turning, keep the helicopter flying. Uh, these charts are usually correlated with uh, fuel burn rates as well. Um, also towards the, the upper end of the, the chart, you can get your max range airspeed to calculate uh, things like, uh, or it's going to give you your, say, max miles per gallon or your max distance per unit of fuel airspeed. Uh, here towards the bottom of the chart, you'll be able to calculate things like your best climb angle. So if you want to go land in a very confined area but you don't have OGE power, well, you can figure out your best climb angle to get out of there, and that's going to give you your best angle to climb, so a certain power setting and airspeed to get out of that uh, with the least amount of forward ground movement, you know, if you have trees or something that prohibit how much movement you have in that confined area. But like I said earlier, um, each operator's manual should have performance charts um, in them that are tailored to that aircraft, and it's important to understand these um, because everything is based on the types of drag in that aircraft. And by understanding the drag, you have a better understanding of performance, and more specifically, what you can and can't control as a pilot in an aircraft. Well, that wraps up the types of drag in helicopters. If you like the videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and uh, make sure you leave any comments or questions in the comment section below. Once again, I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flight.